Um, so a uh, few practicalities. Um, so first of all, uh, it would be nice if you could rename yourself. So to put your name and your organization um, behind your name so that we also know uh, where you're from and who we are talking to. Um, then, uh, so this can be done uh, through the screenshots. So you can go to participants and then more and there you could rename yourself. Um, then a few housekeeping rules. Well, I think you will know where the toilet is, um, probably somewhere there, but you will probably know where it is. Um, but please, for, uh, like Zoom housekeeping rules, uh, stay muted, um, unless, of course, when you want to speak. Um, contribute and share your these are welcome. We are using a Slido tool for this event, so you can go to slido.com and use the following code. Um, someone will also post it in the chat so you can uh, find uh, the Slido. Uh, and there you can post your questions if any questions um, rise. Maybe I can just step in for a second. Uh, I see there is already the first question post in the Slido, but please use English if, if possible, because we have a question in another language apparently. Um, so whenever you post your questions, please use English. Thank you. Yes, the session will be uh, in entirely in English. Um, thank you, Alexandra. And uh, yeah, open and be patient. We are with a lot of people. Um, so regarding the registration, there are 243 participants from 24 countries and 63 programs are represented in this uh, event. So we are of course very happy with this amount of participants. Um, also a few statistics uh, that you uh, that we got thanks to your registration. Uh, so 24 of these 63 programs are planning to use GEMS. And when does your program plan to start uh, the first call? Um, so you see that uh, there's a majority who plan already end of the year, beginning next year to start to use a monitoring system. So this is not only GEMS, but also uh, any other monitoring system. So it's all the registra registrants. Um, then to go briefly, very briefly to the agenda, I will not keep you any longer. Uh, so we have, uh, we start with an introduction into GEMS. Uh, so a little bit of general information, uh, outlook of the first release, um, a brief timeline. So also what comes after this first release um, the steps to settle gems, so what is needed to install gems, uh, something about the communication channels, um, and then uh, we have the um, formal end of the meeting, um, but there is a short break for whoever would like to stay for the question and answer session. The question and answers, we would like to focus really on what is um, shown here on the agenda, so the topics regarding the first release, uh, we have numerous other meetings like sprint reviews and milestone reviews um, and also other yeah. sources where you could contact us uh, for any questions or wishes about features, etc. That this is not really the place to ask questions. So here it's more about uh, installing gems, how to get the license agreement, information about the first release. Um, that is what this session is about. So that is really uh, what the questions was also kind of focus on. Um, but with that, um, I would not like to keep you any longer, and I would like to give the floor to Martin Pospisser, who would like to formally welcome you. Yes, yes. good morning, good morning. and hello, hello. Hey, everybody. Peter, I think there is a problem with the sound. Is it better? I don't hear any echo. Um, can we... Can we... Mm -hmm. Martin, this is strange because you are muted actually. Maybe if you can unmute yourself. I think Martin is in the meeting with two accounts. Ah. Yeah, I see that now one account is muted. So Martin, could you try to speak? I think it should be better now. Yes. No. No, it's still um, maybe, maybe unmute this one. Sorry. No, I think probably they're both on speaker. So maybe we should put one of the users in the waiting room. I don't know if someone could do that. And then it should be better. 
So Martin, if you could unmute now, then maybe. Can you? Yes, yes. You much me? better now. Yes. Yes, I'm, I'm sorry for the technical problems. And I would like to say um, hello and good morning to all of you, everybody from sunny Vienna. Um, maybe I can give you um, a very short review on what happened from um, my perspective as a head of a head of um, European Affairs Department within the city of Vienna, because uh, you think of a lot of ideas when being um, in charge of European affairs, but maybe uh, programming um, a monitoring system for cooperation programs in Europe is not among those ideas at the initial beginning, I would like to say, and it is already the second time that uh, Interact Office Vienna is doing this exercise 2014 for the EMS and now for the GEMS. And um, I must really tell you that, uh, that we were before 2014 not at all uh, prepared to program monitoring system for cooperation programs um, for the European programs. And now that we did this exercise already the second time, I'm, I cannot tell you how proud I am that we did it. And looking back in time a little bit, uh, we promised to the members of the monitoring committee in December 2019 that we would deliver and be ready to deliver something to the programs by mid-2021. Now that by the end of March 2021, we have this launch event uh, online, uh, is really a big, big, big relief and a big success. And I would like to thank especially my team, Ivana and all the uh, James team for the incredible work that had been done and also to so many other partners uh, of, of you that uh, took interest and participated in the development of this new system. Um, I can proudly say that we are uh, within schedule or even ahead of the schedule, both um, in, uh, in time and in money. And we, you will see what, uh, what we did in the last um, one, one and a half years, not even. Uh, and at the moment, I can proudly say that seven license agreements with the new system, James, had already been signed by programs all across Europe and 20 other license agreements are requested at the time uh, I speak. So once again, thank you very, very, very much for, um, for supporting us in this really difficult exercise. And I think what this is the last word I want to address to you. The process has been incredibly transparent uh, and we were having so much uh, exchange and, and input from, from your side uh, in this process. Uh, I was myself completely astonished uh, how many interactions took place um, during developing the new system. So thank you all of you for the valuable inputs and for, for the help and for the feedback, uh, and I won't keep you any longer. Uh, yes, congratulations to, to you uh, and to my team, and yes, um, all the best for the future. Uh, I hope we can really start now uh, with the new product. Thanks a lot, bye. Thank you, Martin, very much. Uh, I would also like to use the opportunity to speak on behalf of Interact, uh, not just Interact Office Vienna, and I would like to thank the whole team. First of all, of course, in, uh, in the Vienna office, but uh, we shouldn't forget the team of Interact in general, because there are a lot of knowledge and a lot of work done also by other colleagues uh, using their expertise on HIT on SEOs, on KEEP, and, and, uh, and so many small little parts that come into this big picture. Uh, of course, uh, as Martin mentioned, we have a history behind us. This didn't start just last year. Uh, I hope that 
most of you, if not all, and I encourage everybody to watch the video so you can learn a little bit about history. You can find the video on our website. We try to tell the whole story, how we came to the point where we are today. Now we're making this as a big deal. This is the first release and this is only first of many to come. And uh, why is this important for us is because uh, it wasn't an easy road to come here, uh, but you helped us, all of you. Uh, and uh, we are very grateful for that. Uh, there was a lot of effort and a lot of work done, but I think much more is uh, still to come. So we are still going to rely on you uh, and, and your support and your expertise and help. Uh, uh, what you know is, uh, I mean, everybody says, you know, history is the best teacher of all. And uh, at least we try to use that uh, for our work. And we learned from EMS. We learned from everything that uh, other monitoring systems also did. In the past period, uh, we learned from HIT from the past, and we tried to develop something for the for GEMS, for joint monitor, joint electronic monitoring system that we are launching for this programming period. Today, um, we're not going to show you in details what's going to happen, but uh, we're going to tell you how you're going to be able to use it, and we hope that um, you will join as 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 very enthusiastic supporters as you have been uh, up until now. Again, thank you to Interact. Thank you to Monitoring Committee and our member states. Thank you to Martin and City Vienna. Thank you to, well, everybody. Uh, and well, let's start. I would say, and let's, let's get the ball rolling. Thank you. Thank you, Ivana. Thanks, uh, Martin, for these uh, introduction words. Uh, you know, GEMS stands for Joint Electronic Monitoring System. It's developed with the knowledge of interact programs and support of many different stakeholders involved in this development process. Interact Office Vienna is implementing the project, but City of Vienna undertakes the contractual obligations and Interact Office Vienna ensures the team and resources when developing the system together with the development company CloudFlight. Involvement of stakeholders is ensured by involving a core group of seven programs to help the project team specify the software and user group that is actively involved uh, to take part in the co-development of the system through thematic network on GEMS. And needless to say, as also Ivana mentioned, that also input from colleagues working with HEAT and SEOs is undertaken when preparing the requirements. Monitoring and following the project implementation is ensured by Interact Monitoring Committee, Interact Office Vienna, Hosting Institution, City of Vienna, and Steering Group. The Steering Group is made of Interact Monitoring Committee members interested in following the development process more closely. The first meeting with the cloud flight was organized in December 2019. And Marcus, you together with your colleagues joined the meeting, right? And what was your first impression on the in idea and scope of the project back then? <laughs> um, to be honest, my first impression was not so much on the idea and scope initially, but actually more on the team, meaning I saw you all together there um, talking to us. So not as you know, as it sometimes happens that you know on the first meeting you get shoved aside into a room with you know one person to talk to and he speaks for everyone. But now it was already the big group. Everybody was um, talking for them, for for all of you for interact about the programs, about um, your daily jobs. Um, I saw that you really liked each other and and are very at the same time knowledge and passionate about the whole topic about what's to come and what is already there and generally about your job so if I had to say I, I, I would say I was already a fan at the first meeting um, but then you know what then happened was that you actually demoed um, the current EMS to us and this is where my first doubts started because you know we had that session you were sitting there with us um, on that afternoon and showing off the, the system, you know, this is that part, and yeah, we need that, that is crucial, and that is that other part, yeah, that is definitely, we can't do without, and there's also this and this and this and that, and I forgot to tell you about that one, that is also necessary, and so, and I was, you know, taking notes, trying to understand, um, wrapping my head around both the concepts of what is actually happening, 
um, in the software and actually the, the business processes that are behind it and the, the ideas and what needs to be covered. And already noticed, okay, um, we're going to need to make some hard decisions in the upcoming year. Um, otherwise, we'll end up with um, a product that is simply not usable um, within that scope. Because what we're looking at and what we're comparing now is a software that has been in development for multiple years and that has grown and grown and got this option and that option and, and lots of parts that simply I already, already saw that we won't be able to cover. and. It will be quite difficult to boil it down, um, reduce the scope into something that actually that we actually end up after a year with a software that, of course, is smaller in scope, but that is actually usable. And that was that was the big challenge. And I would say, um, you know, in the in the following workshops and um, right now, actually, which is giving me the say the most um, positive impression on that we are on the right track is how many of you from program side actually join our reviews and take part and give us our feedback and input and that's that's quite a good feeling that we're on the right track uh, thanks Mar markus that you didn't get scared and this is how our collaboration <laughs> started <laughs> And um, yeah, we started with the definition phase and uh, the object objective of this definition phase was to identify all the activities necessary to be able to plan actually the project and its milestones. Three months of intensive workshop with you, CloudSite, uh, where we were quite busy in this period. And uh, Jose, maybe you could add how important were those three months of defining the project for further implementation? Uh, yeah, good morning, actually. Um, yeah, there were very busy times at that time. And I'm sure that Marcus also remember that, you know, those were the times, it was pretty much the kickoff meeting, the first <laughs> times that we were working with Marcus with CloudFlight. And since that Marcus also give his opinion, I will give my perspective as well. I had the feeling at that time, so, and it was expected as well that um, CloudFlight didn't know anything about Interreg world, cooperation and so on. And it was expected that we passed a lot of time talking with them. What is this all about cooperation? What kind of software we want to build and so on. Yeah, Marcus mentioned EMS was also a bit of helpful, you know, so we kind of transferred all this knowledge with a bit of more smoothness, I would say, and it helped a lot. But um, yeah, workshops identifying all the actors, users, you, workflows, use case, everything around the software. Um, but it, the definition phase was not only about the software itself. It was actually a lot of time we passed about the process, you know, because I think people tend to focus about the software, the outcome of it, it's true, but there's a lot of about the process. This is a project that involved many people many people it's like you can see today it's like right now 218 people you know and in the definition phase we kind of analyzed the whole chain and identified all the elements everyone in terms yeah people that could uh, somehow participate provide a lot of input and they do they have the space for it you know all these kind of sprint reviews where everyone can participate how do we deal in those terms of communication channels like we have today this event, uh, the core group, the it group, the user group, everyone. So that it was kind of a mechanism we defined during those times, a mechanism that was set up. It's still running actually. And it gives us kind of um, the everyday trust, the everyday confidence that we can deliver gems on this kind of demanding timeline and of course, in a specific budget. Yeah, yeah busy times, right? And the uh, definition phase was followed by the start of development. And if I'm not mistaken, the very first line of the code was written on 5th May, but Vlad, uh, you as developer, maybe you remember more clear, uh, what, who, who from you wrote actually the first line of the code and what was the first story about? Yeah, how could I forget? Um, it was me and Raphael that wrote the first lines of code and completed the first story, which was actually about adding and seeing the most bare bones structure of a project application. So a title and a creation date. 
And uh, at least for me, since uh, I have worked before only on projects that were already in the middle or towards the end of their development, starting a project like GEMS from scratch was uh, like a breath of fresh air. But um, enough from me. Raphael, what about you? <laughs> yeah, so I also uh, still remember quite well. So like um, about 10 months ago or a bit more uh, when I basically also started in the architecture role and kind of booting the whole up from the ground uh, is always kind of a nice, uh, good experience. And uh, what he replies a bit is, um, for me, it feels like since that was already um, April, May, it feels a bit like uh, it's, a, it's a lockdown child. <laughs> and um, so it's always, it always, or it feels now even better because we can kind of say it is allowed now to walk and maybe get out a bit. So GEMS is now a bit um, <laughs> out of its uh, initial state. So that's, that's nice. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks for your impressions. And yeah, actually it seems uh, really so long, long time ago. And the system is so much mature than it was in the very beginning. And now we are already in our 20 second sprint. And Alex, you joined in May, right, last year, and it was perfect timing to be part of the very first sprint review. And what was your impression about the first sprint review? Yeah, thank you, Aya, for this question. Uh, actually, it was very interesting. I mean, it was very exciting times because also for us, this maybe you can mute yourself, Aya. Uh, for us, this whole idea of having this uh, sprint review meeting every second week, it was new because in EMS, we didn't have this. Um, so it was the first time, of course, we were very excited because as Vlad said, we had a very tiny feature to present. And already then uh, 30 people joined this meeting to see the very first little thing of GEMS. Uh, and we were a bit worried that what would be the feedback on this, but actually it was, it turned out that this meeting is so fruitful for us. So it is really great every second week, we can show what was developed Sometimes it worked out very well, or sometimes we had some trouble and also not always perfect what is developed in the two weeks, but then we can have the opportunity to talk directly to the users, how they find it, what is missing, do they like it, and we see that this feedback brings a lot of added value for our development process because sometimes we can immediately uh, use this feedback to improve the features in the next sprint or otherwise we take on board uh, requirements for uh, additional features that will come later in the process. So whatever we hear in this uh, sprint review meetings and in these breakout rooms, it's actually something that we can use for the, for the development and this is very valuable for us. And we think um, with this, we can also improve the quality of, of the product. And we really have to thank the people who are still coming every second week, even today, uh, they wanted to come where the, we had no sprint review meeting. I think um, only second time at, uh, at Tuesday we miss, uh, only for Christmas we had a break. So it's really stable process and the people are coming every second week. We have usually about 50 participants now and, and it's, it's really a, a great platform to exchange with the users for us. Thanks, Alex. So yeah, sprint reviews for a smaller uh, demonstration of developments and whenever we've had something more significant to show, we were organizing milestone reviews. And during this uh, time, we had in total two milestone reviews. One was organized last year in September and another this year in January. We also put a lot of effort into the product quality using different testing approaches, right, Yuri? And besides user test, we also extensively test the system. What is the biggest challenge here for us and you personally? Yes, I, you're absolutely right. So basically our goal is to guarantee that our deliverable product uh, is of high quality and low software, uh, software quality standards. And you know what we, all as a team, we are keeping an eye on the product quality so that we uh, try to avoid uh, unexpected behavior as a system. Well, basically, the biggest challenge for us is to build some kind of you know, bridge between uh, the user requirements and the finalized implementation of it. So, and from my side, I'm basically really happy that I can use my knowledge, which I got from my uh, previous life, into this uh, such kind of outstanding project. You know. And you know, it, uh, the thing is that uh, at the end of story, 
uh, I think that we would be able to deliver very useful instrument for the people uh, who really have an effect on it, basically. And this effect is actually uh, coming from their feedback. So as Alex mentioned, so the feedback is very, very important thing. And uh, for us, it's not only uh, feedback, how does the system works and how should the system work, but it's also like a paying attention how to enhance the system. So basically, um, yeah, I would say I'm, I'm happy with our project for a moment. Thank you, Yuri. Um, so uh, yeah, GEMS together is developed with seven uh, Interreg programs who form this pool of Interreg knowledge and have committed their time in helping to specify the software. And core group meets regularly in the core group meetings as well as thematic groups that we are organizing to dedicate uh, to specific topics. Uh, Genia, when you joined last year uh, in January, uh, in just a few weeks, we had the first, uh, not the first, third core group meeting, but it was the first core group meeting for you. And what was your impression of the meeting? Yeah, impression is the right word because I was impressed. Uh, I expected, of course, a knowledgeable group of people this far I knew about the core group, but also that they are so committed to contribute to the project and to deliver knowledge, even delivering homework reliably uh, by date. So this really surprised me. And so I realized this is really a good group to work with. And yeah, back then it was still a physical meeting in January. So everybody came to Vienna and we also spent uh, an evening to get to know each other. So it, I have a very positive uh, memory from this. Of course, uh, discussions are not always sunshine. Uh, we also hear some critical voices, but actually those moments are even more important for us because it's an indication that uh, we should think of, of changing maybe things in the process or reconsider the priorities we are setting uh, and how to develop the GEM system. So also this very valuable input and we couldn't do without it. And also not only directly from the core group, but also we get uh, lots of input from other users, from user group and from outside of, of core groups, borders more or less. And I think this is something in a software project, uh, which is not always the case, that you really have such close contact to the users and you really can uh, tailor the software to the needs uh, based on the requirements and based on the feedback. And in Agile, we are also flexible enough to react on this. So of course, high expectations from, from the users means also for us that we really have to give our best but in the end, then I hope we will all be satisfied with the product we can deliver. So yeah, I think, uh, yeah, we cannot worship enough the contribution of, of the core group and of the users of the programs around. Thanks, Genia. Yeah, and also contribution of user groups and this wider stakeholders group, so-called user group, also actively is taking part in the systems code development. This group is formed from uh, 229 members, but this uh, who observe or take an active part in development of the system and the number of um, members is increasing steadily each after each of our events. These members are updated on the state of play of the system uh, regularly through this platform and informed on the work that core group is doing and invited to join the GEMS activities like testers pool or sprint reviews. And also user group is always welcome to provide feedback to implemented features and, and submit their ideas with the community. Uh, Peter, you used to work in a program that was using their own system. And looking back, do you see the benefit of community monitoring system? Uh, thank you, Aya. Well, if I'm honest, it has pros and cons. But from my personal perspective, it's, for example, much more complex to develop a community monitoring system than your own system um, because you have to meet all these specific needs of many programs. So you could basically see a community monitoring system as a tool that allows programs to configure their own monitoring system. Um, so that is more complex. Uh, what is the benefit, of course, of GEMS then is that um, it's free of charge on a license basis and it's developed by Interact. So you don't have this burden to develop a system because developing your own system costs a lot and also a lot of efforts. 
Um, and then I think what is very important to keep in mind is who we are we're all working for in the end, which is the final end user being the applicants. And for them, a community built system brings a lot of benefits because it's easy to understand and applicants can actually focus then really on uh, on their project IDs and not on understanding all the different monitoring systems that are out there. Um, thank you, Peter. And maybe not to keep you waiting longer from seeing how GEMS looks like and what you can expect from the first release, I'm handing over to you, Alex and Peter, who will give you a brief outlook uh, to the system. Thank you, uh, Aya. Um, yes, so we would like to give you a very short, brief glimpse mm -hmm. of, um, of yeah. uh, the system. And uh, we would not like to go into- Can you see the system? Yes, can you, you can see, see it. <laughs> Um, so we want to show you the models that uh, are developed. So we have a module on user management, program setup, call configuration, application form, including assessment models and an audit log. Uh, all these features have been developed in 10 months uh, through fortnightly sprint review meetings uh, and also demonstrated in the two milestone reviews. Um, so we uh, will not go into detail, um, but we would like to just show you uh, what GEMS is about. So Alex, could you please show us how the user management works in GEMS? Yeah, thank you, Peter. So we now see the login page. This is where we first go and log in. Uh, once we are logged in, I'm now an administrator, so I can see all sections of, of GEMS. And the first model, as Peter said, we want to show is the user management. This is the part where the administrator can see all the users. So um, here in this test system, we have nine users. I can uh, see the list. I can also create here a new user. Even so, users can also register themselves in the system. And I can also go to a specific uh, user. At the moment, we have uh, administra administrator. Then we have the applicant users and we have a program users. So if I, for example, want to see one applicant user, this is a applicant one, his name, and I see his email address and role. And I can even set a new password for this user. If I say, okay, I don't want that this user can access the system anymore or his project, I could theoretically give him an unknown password so he cannot log in anymore. Uh, the next section we want to show you is the program setup. This is also the section where only the administrator and the program user have access. And this is the section actually where we start to set up our program. First thing uh, to fill in should be the languages. So this is only set at the very beginning. Uh, once the uh, GEMS is installed, you select what actually is your system languages here. We have an example with three system languages, which are German, English and Hungarian. English is by default what we deliver as Interact. Here in this system, we also have a, a few translations for German and Hungarian added. So we can see that when I'm here, this is where I can change the language. So I could switch to German and see most of it already in German or even thanks to colleague Java, also some uh, Hungarian already, how it will look like if the system is translated into uh, Hungarian. But let's continue with English. Um, we see here that we have two languages, German and Hungarian, selected as input languages for the application form. Uh, other parts of the program setup are linked to your Interact program. So this means there you insert actually your data from the Interact program as you have submitted it to the commission, which uh, is on the one hand the geographical coverage uh, where you can have uh, with this NUTS Explorer can select your NUTS regions. We have an example here. Also, you can enter your basic program data, um, the funds you're using. We are in our example having uh, ERDF uh, selected as a fund and you can even add an own fund if you want. Some programs are also managing national funds. So this is really the funds you're managing, not the contribution partners get outside of the program. But if you're managing a national fund, which some Indiki programs are doing, for example, then you can add it here we made an example with a Serbian fund, which is probably not a real uh, life example. Um, also, you can insert here or have to insert here all your uh, intervention logic of the program, meaning priorities, including specific objectives. Um, so if you add a priority, you can select to which policy objective it is connected. 
and then uh, select the specific objectives um, that are in the regulations and give your priority a specific name and title and ID. Here we have already two created as an example. Uh, then you have a list of all the indicators. Also every indicator must be linked to a specific objective. So here we have, you can have, for example, several indicators linked to the same specific objective. Uh, you can use here the predefined indicators from the commission. Uh, we just implemented it in a very nice way that you select the indicator code and the system already pre-fills uh, these predefined indicators from the regulations. But of course, you can also say you have your own program indicator and this is not applicable. Um, and further uh, parts are the strategies um, that are there to select legal status in case you have also another legal status that you allow and simplified cost options. This is a section which is, um, for example, we did not have in EMS yet. So where you can define lump sums and unit costs uh, that your program is offering to the applicants. And once all this is filled in and finalized, then you can actually go ahead and start the first call. Here in our example, we have already some calls prepared. We have a first call, which is already published and running. Uh, then we have some draft calls. So as long as a call is drafted, it cannot be seen by the applicant. But here, for example, I can show you how it looks. We have here the basic call information, which is the name and the start and end date, very important because this is the time when applicants can apply for the call. Uh, then other general settings for the call, the priority strategies, funds, and so on, plus the budget settings, which gives uh, all the simplified cost options that you wanna use in a call. And finally, if all this is configured and you say this is how your call should look like, then we can actually say, so today from 10 o'clock, this new call should have started. So I'm publishing now. And then from now on, people can apply for this call. And with this, I would hand over to Peter, who will show you how actually the system looks from a perspective of the applicant. Thank you, Alexandra. So if I log in as an applicant, um, basically this is the welcome screen that everyone sees. So here you can create an account. If you log in as an applicant, you already immediately see that the view is very different. So it is already simpler. You do not have, of course, program and call set up. And you have a welcome dashboard where you can see the applicant applications you created and the calls. So by clicking on the apply button, you could apply for a call and you can also see information related to the call by clicking on the call. So here you could see um, what, is, um, what the call is about. Uh, so I will just show you very briefly um, an application form. So here we have an application form. So you also have a dashboard in the beginning seeing the state of play. Uh, so the project name, who created it, um, what the status is, etc. Also, when the call ends, how much time I have left. Um, and uh, then the sections here are implemented fully according to HIT. Um, so the application form is built on the HIT template. So all the sections in the system um, follow the HIT template. Um, if you fill in an entire application form, so you can navigate through the different sections and create work packages, partners, etc., associated organizations, if you fully do this, then the final view is um, that you have a Gantt chart with a project plan. So here you can see, for example, that this project has um, four work packages with deliverables, outputs, um, and also result indicators and results. So these are all planned by the project. So you can see in the sections that here, for example, the project selected results and in a work package activities and output. So this is how they build the intervention logic. Then also budget is assigned to partners. Um, and in the end, uh, in an overview, you also we also have project tables, um, which show um, show how this budget was then assigned. So partner budget per fund, uh, also including the contribution uh, with total budget and, um, and also partner budget per budget line and also the simplified cost options to see how much of the simplified cost options was assigned to the partners. Um, so also the budget can be entered. 
uh, what I should note here is that um, all input fields are there according to it, um, but not all overview tables are there yet. So we are still working on the additional uh, overview tables that are still coming according to the HIT template. So there will be additional project budget tables and also a few summary tables here in section A that will still be developed. But the input data is there, so projects can fully um, fill in all the uh, data. And then uh, these, um, these budget tables will just show the data later on that is already implemented. Um, so that is very, very briefly the application form. Um, I can quickly submit the project. Uh, so now the, this project is submitted here, I could also add attachments. And then I would like to ask uh, Alex what happens after a project is submitted. I hope you can now see again my view as an administrator of the system. Uh, so as Peter said, uh, this 3D Mare, if I'm here in this project application section where I can see all the projects uh, in the system as an administrator, I can see that this is now in the status submitted. I can see that also there was another project already submitted under the other uh, specific objective. And I can see that there are two more projects which have already been partly assessed. So they are already uh, eligible or ineligible. If I now go into the project that Peter just submitted, I can as a program or user or administrator, of course, uh, look into the details of the project or I can go directly to the assessment section. So this is the section where um, the program user assesses uh, the project. The first step is, of course, to enter the, the results of the eligibility check and also the quality check in the assessment section. Um, at the moment, we don't have the checklists in our system. Uh, you, however, we can upload the assessment files here. Uh, so the checklist would be filled in outside of the system and then simply upload it for the moment. However, we can, of course, say what was the result of the check. So that, uh, did the project pass the eligibility assessment or uh, did it fail to pass? So if I confirm this, then uh, I see here that it passed the eligibility check. And I can also say, for example, that the MC decision in the end was that this project is really eligible and should continue uh, to the quality assessment. Um, the same is then for the quality check, where again, I can enter the quality assessment and I can finally uh, have the funding decision and say the MC decided that this project is funded or uh, approved with conditions or not approved and so to say rejected. I can also of course um, ask the project to, or the applicant to do some improvements for example to upload missing documents or to, uh, in, to fulfill some conditions for approval with this button return to applicant then the uh, applicant has the possibility to modify the application form and submit it again. Um, so this is basically this uh, assessment section. I can maybe just show you now as a last part of the system, the newly developed audit log. So this is only accessible as an administrator. And here, uh, some of you might know we had an external application for it, Kibana, which was recording all the steps. But now uh, we included this in the system. So it's only accessible by the administrator. And here I can see actually all the, the steps we just did. I mean, we did not, not do many changes. We, main things were that we logged in or logged out in the last few minutes. But here we kind of, for example, say, see that Peter uh, submitted his uh, project with the project ID one, so 3D Mare. He just submitted it um, and that the application status changed now to submit it. And here we can also see that I did, for example, the uh, eligibility assessment and also submitted the eligibility decision. I can also search for actions, for example, when was a call published? Uh, if I then search for this, then I see that the administrator just today published the call, the call, second call was published. So this is the way how to trace all the, the activities in the system for the administrator in case of an audit. Um, here we can actually see all the steps. This was in short, the, the very brief presentations through the sections already developed 
in GEMS. Uh, we hope you liked it. And if there are any questions to this part, of course, use Slido and we will answer them in the last part of this meeting. Thank you very much. Yes, thank you very much. And uh, Yuri will also also posted the link to the test environment in the chat. Um, this environment is available for anybody to have a look at the system whenever you want. So if you want to also test yourself, go ahead and don't hesitate to get in touch with us. Um, with that, we would like to hand the floor to Genia, who will talk to you about the timeline. Yes, I will do so. Um few words about the timing of GEMS development uh, before the big moment will arrive. Uh, yeah, timeline. In May 2020, you already heard uh, that the development of the GEMS software started. And today, 10 and a half months later, uh, we are proud to present you the first release. Another release we have agreed to launch uh, in May, so in two months, agreement with the core group second release uh, in May. Then we agreed for another release, a quite important one in the end of summer, about August uh, this year, because this will be the last release before programs are starting their calls. So there should be uh, lots of features and necessary functions in place for this. Of course, we are also flexible now to uh, launch releases anytime with a little bit of preparation. So we may think of uh, having another release in the meantime, but we keep this flexibility and see how the development is going on. Yeah, the project, uh, we did not start with uh, the whole monitoring system at once, but we divided it into phases content-wise. The first phase you just have seen in the demo by Alex and Peter is all you need for an application to generate an application and to come to a decision. So I will not lose any more words on the contents of this. And the second phase uh, is something we start now to, to collect the requirements. We had already a couple of sessions with the core group working on the, the process diagram and on the use cases and on the must haves. Uh, phase two is all about uh, running projects, uh, so starting with the contracting and then providing all the routine or uh, repeating features around the reporting, partner and project level, financial and content reports, payment claims and payments to projects. Uh, as we said, we are defining the requirements now and uh, implementation of this phase two will start later in this year. And the phase three will be the last phase, which will be all about uh, monitoring of projects and program level accounting. And this phase, we will start definition also later this year. And this phase will include modules for audit, payment claims, recovery, and payment claims on program level and closure features. Yeah, how do we get to this timing? Um, timing is given more or less by the needs of the programs by the progress of program development of program life cycle. Uh, we made a survey in last autumn uh, where we asked the programs when will they need what feature or when will programs start the first call, when will they expect first payment claims, etc. You see it here in this slide. Actually, you do not see the slide, sure. We see only first. Yes. You see the first slide. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, I was showing you, okay, the timeline. <laughs> now we see it. Which we're already talking about the phases. This is now the timing of the programs. Uh, that is uh, our timeline when we would like to deliver or when we will deliver the features to the programs. And yeah, next is now the outlook to the second release uh, in May, which we will start literally tomorrow, or we are already with our heads um, in this second release development. And we said again, uh, not um, developing many features at once, but rather concentrate on, on a couple of features. And uh, by end of May, which is only four sprints, 
um, to deliver something that programs can already try out and test and give us uh, feedback on. And uh, we had a session with the core group about uh, the value of, of the features that are more or less in the pipeline now. And um, they helped us to, to prioritize. And the decision now was that we start with the privileges management, which is a big chapter and also um, a, a significant uh, change of the, of the software. And we start with the system privileges, uh, which means privileges for program users within the system. And we uh, intend to deliver something useful already by end of May. And also we will start with uh, developing a first basic solution for two-step application procedure. This is also a procedure that um, programs will apply already for the first calls they will have. So, and it's also a module that is kind of dependent on, on other functions and features. So we rather start early with this to deliver something basic and then uh, follow uh, the development on this. So this is the plan for end of May. And beyond uh, the May release, we will also, um, we will already intend to start the, the phase two development. As I said, uh, modules contracting, then checklists for reporting. We will develop first payments, uh, will be the lump sum payments, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, but still, also after May, a big part of our concentration will still lie on elaborating further features of the first phase. And uh, one thing we have, we are planning is to implement a configurator for application form, meaning that um, the application form can be set up within the system, within the graphic user interface. Uh, this configurator should then allow hiding optional fields uh, according to the hit template. It should allow to uh, configure the forms for step one and step two of the two-step application procedure. It should allow to uh, define the mandatory fields for the pre-submission checks, so those fields that have to be filled in when a user clicks a submit of an application. It will also allow to translate application form fields within the graphic interface. And beyond this configurator, we will also work on uh, versioning. So application forms will have a history and uh, this history can then also historic version can be viewed and compared to each other. Uh, we will provide a plugin interface. Plugins first thing will be necessary for the pre-submission checks because programs have their very individual needs for those checks and also for other things uh, that may occur later on. And input locking, meaning that if two people are editing the same set section at the same time of the application form, that they are getting a warning and that it's prevented that users are overwriting each other's data. So this is the plan for after May. And then if we go further, sorry. Yeah. Um, yeah, next to the content developments, we are also continuously improving um, kind of the background of the software on the one hand in technical regards. So for example, developing templates that if there is a new page created for the system, uh, there is already a template, so it's easier to, to develop it. And also in terms of usability of, of graphic UI, that uh, behavior in the system is, is unified so that users really easier find their way, that error messages are harmonized uh, and so on. So that color coding, etc. So this is, is a lot of small improvements which help a lot the users to find their way through the system. Yeah, as you may got the impression, uh, this is still work in progress. So today we have the first release. There will be other releases following, of course. So we are by far not at the end of the development. We do not have the full functionality developed yet. We are still in phase one with what we present today. We also did not have 
the time to uh, fully implement the features that are already provided. So this is maybe also a characteristic of Agile and it's, it's a, an advantage that we can deliver already a functional software to the programs uh, to install, to try it out and to give us feedback and then uh, to decide uh, how to proceed with the further developments. Yeah, so this was it from my side. Thank you very much. And I hand over now to Aya. Okay, thank you, Genia. So finally, we are in a stage where we are ready to provide programs with the access to the GEM software. But in order to get an access to the GEM software, firstly, you as programs need yes from your own relevant management structure to test or use uh, GEMs. After that, uh, you will send an email to GEMS team to formally start this collaboration and receive license agreement from us. After the license agreement is signed, scanned, a version needs to be sent back to us and paper version needs to be sent by post. Only after receiving the license agreement, Internet will provide uh, access to the installation files and instructions. It is highly recommended that uh, programs test gems before starting to use it um, with the real data. And please note that signing the license agreement doesn't oblige you to use it. Also in case of one hosting institution for several programs, license agreement needs to be signed for each separate program. While GEMS is easy to use, there are important technical requirements that must be met and uh, Jose will tell you more about them. Yes, um, so we already have a lot of documentation, technical aspects there. Uh, you can access already, it's in the thematic network for GEMS. It's accessible for everyone and you can pretty much, maybe have, some of you are already familiar with that. We actually tend to update time to time. It's actually good that even if you already know about it, you could take a look again. Uh, with most likely you get notifications when those documents are updated. But still, um, we have documentation about uh, the technical specification of GEMS, which pretty much says what is GEMS, what is under the hood, and uh, what do you need in terms of machine hardware to run it. We have uh, also documentation explaining um, the installation process. It's a kind of a guide, uh, instruction by instruction, command line. Uh, it's also good to take a look. I mean, this is technical, of course, it's intended for IT managers or IT providers. It's always good if you are in the process of procurement and so on that you collect all this documentation and provide to them. Actually, the third point, it's actually for procurement. It's a document in the form of a checklist. Uh, it contains like tasks that, tasks, yeah, that you should take into account when you are doing procurement. So things like they should do the backup, you know, how is it the updates, even the, um, the certificate and so on, technical aspects to take into account for procurement. Yeah, you can have access to all this documentation is there. Um, another thing that you don't have unless you already signed the license agreement, it's of course the software itself, the GEM software package, which is basically a zip file and it will be available Today, actually, since today is the release, so everyone who has the license agreement to sign can download finally the software. Um, you can also have access to the source code, the repository. This is, I guess, more for advanced programs who might want to know exactly what is going on inside of the code of GEMS. They can have all visibility there. And of course, if you have the package, you can install the test environment itself in your own um, premises, your own server. And from that moment, you can start to explore. It's a test environment. It's like a playground. You can try things, you can break, you can reset them. Of course, you can also report bugs that you find in your test environment. We have a help desk for that. You can open tickets there. We kind of welcome for that. And at the end, you can also, of course, install the installation, install gems for production. Even though I made a space here to highlight a bit the fact that this process 
this last task should be one uh, very last or postponed, I would say, like around one month before you start to have your call, your applicant, because, you know, the software has some updates or whatsoever, and you can make sure that uh, when you have the call, you have the latest updates and, um, sorry, <coughs> you have the latest version and everything is clean, you know. Um, yeah. That was it, Taya. Uh, thank you, Jose. Just to precise the information, uh, GEMS package will be available from 1st April on today. It's not today yet. Ah, <laughs> not today, 1st of April. Yes. Uh, so, um, yeah, there are also some key elements to dedicated support that you can expect from GEMS. First of all, GEMS help desk that Jose already mentioned. This would be the best place uh, to troubleshoot practical issues associated with GEMS or to suggest uh, new features. But we will tell you more about this in a few. Also, uh, to programs that sign the license agreement, we will offer eight hours of support for GEMS. And uh, you can use these uh, six hours of support within the six months. And this can be used to support installation, uh, customization of the installation. And also please note that there is no service level agreement between Interact and programs. Also Interact will maintain and manage the core GEM software, including uh, releasing updated versions with bug fixes and improvements and, and more. There's also support you can expect from the wider community. Firstly, uh, GEMS community, thematic uh, network on GEMS. That's your portal to peer-to-peer -peer support. If you are not part of the community, then uh, you can join it anytime. Also, uh, this will be the place where you will see the invitations to sprint reviews, trainings, and etc. And any program that builds and add-ons to the system also is encouraged to make it available through this community to all other programs with the license agreement. So this is about the support. And uh, all programs that are interested, uh, we already mentioned, license agreement needs to be signed. Uh, with City of Vienna that is hosting institution of Interact Office Vienna. And the difference uh, with the license agreement of EMS is that the license agreement has the official <coughs> language in English. <coughs> Previously, official language was uh, German. An agreement had a courtesy translation. Now, license agreement is also translated uh, by programs in Italian, German and French languages and made available thanks yeah, to programs who did the translation in the thematic network of GEMS. So if you, you are interested, you can find the translations there. And by date, as uh, already was mentioned, we have seven license agreements and uh, 22 official expressions of interest to use the GEMS. Ivana, maybe you remember on 5th February, we got our first uh, official request for a license agreement. And then the very first license agreement we received on 24th February. And how did it feel? Well, it, it was a very exciting moment, but also a little bit scary. I remember uh, first being very happy when the email came with the request for a license agreement. But then when the signature came, I have to admit my heart was beating a little bit faster because, you know, we have all this, as you presented before, milestones reviews and then sprint reviews and our regular meetings also. And all of this is somehow, you know, it's happening, but you're not really aware that this is it. You know, programs are going to start using it. And that was the moment. Uh, so it was, you know, a happy moment, but also I had a little bit of fear. Uh, but now it's all good because now it just keeps rolling and uh, we are very happy. Yeah, and we as team just can add to it. It was a very exciting moment after all the work that uh, has been done to actually get ready for that moment. And now when we have introduced you to the steps that you programs have to take to settle jams, uh, we also would like to introduce you to the communication channels that you can use uh, to keep an eye on what jams is uh, doing and get involved. So let's move to communication channels. So yeah, one might think what is the best place to follow the jams development? And well, uh, we suggest you start with the jams portal. 
Gems portal is the entry point that will help you to find exactly what you are looking for. Uh, this portal will have also links to other platforms like Interact communi Communities website, as well as Gems help desk. What you can find in Gems portal, it's the place where you will go first to look for information you may need, because the idea of the portal is actually to lead you to the right place you look for. You will see the references to relevant services, as well as um, GEMS test environment, installation packages and files. And please note that at the moment, moment portal is in its early stage and will be updated with the content to make it even more user friendly to navigate. There are several communities you might consider to be a member. Uh, we already, during uh, today's meeting, very often mentioned thematic network on GEMS. So this is the main community that provides you with the constant updates on activities um, related to GEMS development. And also this community is the place where uh, GEMS team invites everyone to the meetings, uh, to the events we are organizing. And uh, you will find information on the team, on the scope of the project uh, work, what the core group is doing, and also technical documentation. So to join this community, you just need to send us an email with the request and we will glad you, gladly add you. There are also three targeted communities to those access is provided only to the core group members or programs that have signed the license agreement community that is uh, created for the work of IT group is a subgroup of core group. And in this group, uh, core group members exchange on technical aspects of the implementation. Interact website also is a great source for information regarding the GEMS. And Kevin, maybe you could briefly introduce the Interact website. Thanks, Aya. Uh, yeah, uh, I think broadly speaking, people will be familiar with the events page um, and the library function where you can search for gems and you can find uh, the latest information. We also maintain the post 2020 section and I'll just share the link to this in the chat. And this is particularly for the gem section, we curate a little bit more, we manage the content here. So you can see quite easily all the news items, including the news uh, we launched this morning that gems is ready to download. Um, so the website obviously keeps up to date, particularly for events where we put all the publications and presentations into the library, but also do be aware of that post 2020 section where you can uh, keep up to date at the touch of a finger with all the news items that we post uh, and the updates that come from the team there. Yeah, great. Thanks, Kevin. And as one of the most important channels for communicating with us um, is the help desk. And Yuri will give you a brief introduction to it. Thank you. So yeah, basically help desk uh, is actually one of uh, uh, sources where we can get some sort of feedback, which is actually very, very uh, sufficient to get because it has a great effect on the uh, program development. And basically you can find here some uh, very important things like a program support for a user. So if you will be able to register and if you want to register, then uh, you can create a, a support request or for instance, some sort of uh, uh, ticket which would help to enhance on the system basically. And in advance, you can find here some technical documentation which would help you to go through the uh, steps how to set up our system. And uh, in future, you can also find some uh, tutorials, which we will turn to video uh, video help, which actually helps you to start the system or to warm up the system. Uh, if you have been using the help desk before, you can mention that the design of the system has been changed a bit. So we have done it uh, on purpose just to differentiate it between the portal and the help desk. So uh, you are very welcome to uh, be registered on a help desk. I will send you the link how to do this and the link to the help desk itself. Thank you. Thank you, Yuri. And I guess then now we are ready to launch the gems and we can start a countdown, right? 10. Nine. Eight. Seven. Six. Five. Four, <laughs> three, two, Four. one. Oh. 
unfortunately you couldn't hear the sound but it was very loud <laughs> peter maybe you can share the slide from the break which was after the launch so thank you all so gems is hereby officially launched um, those who signed the license agreement, as was said, will receive the installation package or it will be available for them uh, on the 1st of April. Um, as I said in the beginning, this is the end of the part, formal part of the meeting. Uh, so we would like to thank you for your participation if you are um, leaving us here. If you are interested in the answers to the Q&A, then please stay. We will now have a five minute break. And afterwards, we'll have the Q&A session. Also, please have a look at Slido because a lot of the questions have already been answered. So um, with that, thank you all and see you in five minutes. Thank you all and see you in a few.
So welcome back everyone who stayed for us uh, with us for this uh, question answer session. Thank you for all the questions posed in Slido. Most of them actually are concerning features, uh, how they look now, how they will look in the future. We still want to try to answer most of them. We already posted some of the answers in Slido. So you, you see sometimes this reply and you can click on it and also read it. But uh, still, as we don't have so many, we have 19 at the moment, we would like to quickly go through them uh, one by one and simply also discuss a bit so you have a bit of a broader picture. Um, okay, the first question is, will there be an option to include multi-factor authentication? At the moment, this is not implemented yet, uh, but there is a plan for the future. I don't know if Yuri or Jose want to add something on this because it's apparently very interesting for programs as 10 have voted for this question. Oh, yes, we yeah. have. Okay. okay, go on, Jose. <laughs> Yuri. Have okay, uh, uh, I will start, you can continue. So basically we have uh, some concepts for a future development and uh, definitely it's gonna be included in the future releases. We have already done some enhancement for our identification process. So we have changed a policy for a password. Uh, to follow the security uh, requirements. And uh, of course, this uh, multi-factor authentication will follow. So that is, that's all. Thank you. No, no, no. I think Yuri quite did it. And these questions were already answered, this one. So you can also see the very briefly reply. <laughs> this is the extensive reply. Okay, so we have this one answered. The next one, uh, actually, there were a few questions about the um, search. There were actually a few uh, questions about search options uh, or filter options in lists, uh, so in the user list or also in the list of projects. At the moment, this is not yet implemented. The only thing you can do is to sort by different columns. So this is a feature which will be implemented. Uh, this filtering and the search option will be implemented for all lists. Simply it's not yet there, but it will be of course implemented. So we can mark also this one as done. Okay, then there was a question about the return to applicant button and what it does at the moment, uh, how we can uh, trace the changes. At the moment, we are not having a versioning of application forms yet, but this is a feature planned as Kenya already explained. Uh, for the next release to have uh, this versioning implemented. So whenever you will reopen application form, a new version will be created and you can then see uh, different versions of the application form in the system. And later on, you will also get a comparison tool, uh, probably not with the next release, but with one of the next releases, also a comparison tool will be implemented for this versioning. So this is also a feature about to come. Uh, then are there plausibility checks included, like when an applicant forgets to fill out a section in the application? Um, this is also already, uh, there is a reply, but maybe Genia can have a few words about plausibility checks. Yes, and plausibility checks, or we also call them pre-submission checks, uh, they will be included. Uh, they are not yet or now only in the very basic, so they only the must for the logic are really checked uh, for saving, but before the submission, we plan to introduce this uh, check that also the applicant can do. And there are certain fields that will be mandatory. This is already agreed with the core group also which fields uh, that should be. And there are also a few checks that will be logic checks like minimum number of partners, minimum number of cooperation criteria ticked and so on. So all this will be implemented. And uh, since the program's needs uh, for especially those logic checks uh, are very diverse, we will provide a plugin interface so that additional checks uh, can be then implemented individually by, by the programs themselves. So then I mark also this one as answered. Uh, next one is about uh, will the GEMS authentication for applicants equate to or allow for a legally valid electronic signature? Uh, we have looked into this topic uh, and I would maybe ask Jose or Yuri to talk a bit about what we plan for electronic signature. Yeah. <clears throat> 
Uh, electronic signature, it's a topic, odd topic. We are working right now on it, but uh, I have to tell you that it's not an easy one because especially like even in the question, if it's legally valid and you know, this is like a very difficult topic because GEMS uh, uh, is a software that will be present in a lot of different member states and there's a lot of legislation about it, what is considered uh, enough, you know, to admit it as a, that authenticates, that exactly says that the user is a real person who is using the system and not, but we still have a lot of confidence that we will find something that will at least fulfill the general requirements for the electronic signature. We have some, already some ideas, but um, I would say not right now, we are the best context to go for it. As you see, also we all not all the features are specified for the future. So we are, as we work in this agile way, uh, always when we come to this feature, we actually collecting the requirements and discussing with the core group or sometimes also with the Matic groups or with other experts um, what we need for this feature. So for some of the features, we are still um, will do that in the in the future, and you will also have to the possibility to to bring in your knowledge uh, once it's we are getting there. Yeah, I think I would like to complement that through. I think, uh, you know, all of you can participate. And if you have really a nice idea how to implement it, please welcome. We are really welcome for these ideas. Electronic signature is one of them. If you really have nice ideas, please get in touch with us. Yeah, I think some programs already explained the, how it works in their current monitoring system in the, in the help desk. So uh, maybe you want to join the, the discussion there if you have already a solution for this in your current monitoring system. Okay, then we come to the next question. In the call configuration, can we upload some documents like guidelines? This was already answered also that at the moment not, but it's planned that in the future you can upload documents in the call, which will then be visible to the applicant uh, who applies for the call. Uh, will there be an uh, only vision mode for national authority. Okay, so this is about uh, permissions, so that there are users who will only have few mode of or few access to some of the parts. Maybe you should say you're preparing the um, this model about uh, privileges. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, this is also a hot topic, I would say, but this is a topic that we are already implementing. We are working already on it. Uh, we have, we start a bit with some code on that. Right now we have roles, you know, and they are fixed. We only have three, but uh, actually Guinea already introduced that it's prioritized to deliver until May. Um, we will have privilege, which you can create roles. And for this purpose, you can have your own role for national authority, where you exactly customize what this role can see, do, view in the system. So you have that uh, you will be allowed to customize all these kind of permissions in the system in a few months. Thank you. The next one is also about permissions, but it's a specific question about checklists. So the checklists are not yet implemented in terms, as we said, at the moment it's only upload function. And there it depends on, on, on the section at the moment we have implemented for the assessment model and there it's the program users and administrator who can upload checklists in this specific section for assessment. Um, later, of course, as, as Jose explained, there will be specific permissions where they can say which program user is allowed to do that, uh, but this is also for, for, for the future. Uh, then are there filter options for searching project applications? We answered that, that this will be coming later. We, at the moment, you can only sort the tables. Can the applicants change the password of, for their user? So yes, you can change your own password as, as a user. And there is a possibility for the program or for the administrator to change a password of another user. user administration, is it possible to make users simply inactive? We also answered that already that this is planned for the future. It's not yet implemented. Therefore, at the moment, you could simply change um, the, the password so that the user doesn't know his password anymore and cannot access the system. 
Is there an overview of costs and funding for each partner and separately for EU partner and non-EU partner? Uh, this question I would uh, hand to Peter because he's our expert on the funding overview tables. Um, thank you. Uh, so at the moment, uh, we have overview of funding for each partner, um, but we do not have a division yet for EU or non-EU partners. There is, however, um, potential, well, it depends if you create additional funds related to non-EU, uh, if you create additional funds for non-EU partners, you could potentially select those and then um, separate that way the non-EU partner funds. Um, so at this stage, there's not a clear separation, but uh, you could um, add uh, additional funds and funds are shown per partner in this overview table B1. Exactly, and you have there the country, so potentially you could just have to distinguish which country is in the EU and which not. Thank you, Peter. Can we use API to import and export data? Yes, I think that's a yes, somebody. Uh, yes, we have an approach which is going to be demonstrated regarding the exportation of the data, and this is going to be present uh, quite soon, I guess. And uh, regarding the import, we would need to think about the future, yes. Well, <clears throat> I think. Yeah, I think you can import and export data using the API. This is the quick answer. And uh, it's true because as we once explained the API, you can do everything as the user can do in the browser. So if the user can see data, they can export data to him. And if he can do actions and so on, they can also import data there. Okay, thank you for this answer. So it was this question. Um, the next one is, is it possible to apply the system and applicants to use it from outside EU countries for current ENI programs? This was already also answered. Um, so basically you install your gems on your server. And of course you can, you, if you have uh, applicants from outside EU countries, of course you, they have access to, to this installation uh, if you don't block it for some reason. Uh, so of course, this is this is a goal that also all applicants can apply in your into your program. Uh, so basically, we have already been in discussion with ENI programs about specific requirements, specifically for having multiple funds for one applicant. But if there is other requirements specifically for ENI programs, uh, you're very welcome to, to contact us and, and let us know about this. So of course the system should be used or potentially be used by any interact program irrespective of the program area. Okay, we have another question about for user authentication, maybe to use EU login service. Um, I think there's not a plan to, to connect to this because uh, the user database is for each specific installation. So uh, there's also not a common user database for, for different GEMS installations. So for the user database, there's no plan to connect it to the EU database, but for organizations, there is a plan to connect it to a uh, EU database. Then the next one is, will the recording of today's launch event be available afterwards? Maybe Aya can say something. Yes, it will be available and we will upload it. So you will be able to access it anytime in Interact website. Okay, thank you. How to ensure that there will be compatible com compatibility between GEMS and the system used by the audit authority? Uh, we receive such questions quite frequently, not only audit authority, but also uh, accounting functions of uh, CA. Maybe Jose can say something about it. What is the current status here? <clears throat> so once again, I think this is a topic for the API itself, you know, how do we connect gems with other systems? Um, 
it's not that we know exactly all solutions, what software and technology CA or audit authority use, but uh, for sure you, you can, you have the tools to know what Shams is, how do we have these e templates and all the data that uh, we require for Shams. And uh, you have to match what data you need in your interface with other systems. And uh, if you have all data in both, I think the API will make the trick. Of course, you have to invest some customization, a bit of software development on the external system in order to connect to GEMS, in order to use the API. But as far as the, we have the data, it should be okay. Is will there be models to handle small projects with easier procedures and small project plans? Uh, so here maybe uh, Kenny or Peter. Yes, this is planned to implement. Um, firstly, to have these umbrella projects uh, in the system with the budget for the small projects. Uh, we are also in discussion with our indirect colleagues who are uh, running uh, groups with programs on this, on the requirements. Uh, and since the survey actually resulted that those small project funds are not really provided with the first call, uh, we postponed the development a little bit, but it is on the plan and we will provide modules for this. Thank you. The next one is, is GEMS developed under the ESO 2023. Uh, I just checked what it is. It is a uh, information technology security techniques, so information security management system. I don't know if any of us can answer this. Yeah, question. maybe I can give a word then. Uh, you know, GEMS is developed in agile, and we could not say that it follows this standard at this moment, you know, because it's an iterative process so that we can deliver as much as we can in a short period of time. But it's something that I think it's good to touch in that topic. I think it should something that we should follow at least converge into a standard that gives a lot of security for everyone. Mm -hmm. Yeah, something maybe we, we can look into later or some, I don't know who posed this question, if there's a specific follow up on this. Okay, then how heavy is GEMS for the server as service? What has stress tests showed? Yuri, our stress test yeah. man. So uh, actually, uh, we have also discussed this uh, topic. We have done some loading tests and stress testing on the system. So basically, it uh, uh, follows the original uh, requirements to the system. And requirements will come in from the questionnaire to the programs, how many users could use uh, the system at the same time. Basically, it shows that uh, our current loading uh, on a system doesn't break it and it uh, stays uh, functional. So if you need more information about that, please contact us via uh, help desk and we can give you a short report. Yeah, first, it's always also very valuable to have this real data from programs. Because we, of course, uh, rely on, on what you give us as a what we should expect for a stress test. Yep. Thank you, Yuri. Okay, is it foreseen an audit on GEMS to test functioning and compliance with EU rules? Yes, there is a plan for an audit. Um, Aya, I don't know if you want to say something about the audit plan for GEMS. Yes, we are at the moment looking into options to do the system audit. We plan to do it later this year. This is the answer that we could do at the moment. Thank you. Okay, now I made this exactly this mistake with the clicked away the, the wrong question. Uh, I don't know if anybody no, has. No, you didn't. Mind. You did it. Think... it jumped on. Yeah, but I clicked away uh, one. No, you didn't. No. It's fine, Alex. Ah, there, language there were two okay. questions ah, to the same, same topic. Yeah. Ah, okay, this confused me. Okay, thank you. Uh, <laughs> okay, so this we have the NOSA answer already. Okay, um, do you plan in the future to link GEMS to SFC 2021? 
Uh, yes, we will look into how to connect this uh, for sure. Um, we will make sure that you can export data and import it in SFC or that you have actually the data and the structure you need for SFC. But uh, potentially we'll look if there's any possibility for direct data exchange, but this is also a, a future where we're still collecting requirements and where we will, um, this will be actually part of the phase three. So later this year, we will start working on, on this link. How strict do programs have to use the hit application to template in order to make best use of gems? Uh, this is a actually interesting question because it's not feature related, but more more general question. Um, I don't know who wants to answer again. I mean, I can have a go. Um, of course, uh, we are implementing the hit template and what programs will have to live with is the logic of the hit. So everything that is a business logic and has a, a kind of impact or link to later stages like reporting, um, this, this logic can not or not easily be broken because this would then go against the core system. But yeah, of course, there is a certain flexibility because you can translate freely the fields of heat. So you can also make a completely different field out of a field. And there is also the way of having yeah, some extensions. GEMS is a free software, so programs can also do their own developments on top of this. So there is a certain freedom. And we are also discussing about providing a few additional fields uh, that programs wish to have on top of it. So there is a certain flexibility, but in principle, the logic has to be followed. And yeah, mostly we provide the hit template as is and what programs make out of it. This is then their cup of tea. Is, is there a direct connection to keep.eu for seeing? Uh, I think Jose had a meeting with them recently. Yeah, sure. Uh, yeah, it's actually quite fresh news. Our intention is that keep will connect to gems actually using the API. So it's a yes. Should be of, of course, in, in always, the uh, program will be always um, capable to you know to disable or not keep and you know the permissions what keep can access okay thank you jose the next one is will it be possible to have reports about the national beneficiaries e.g financial reports or any kind of reports regarding beneficiaries by country uh, of course there will be reports this is also a feature which will be implemented later um, so our focus for the first release was really that uh, programs can open a call that uh, the application form, all the input fields are there so that uh, there is nothing hampering the first call of programs. Uh, but everything which is about uh, monitoring the program, overview tables, uh, statistics and so on, uh, this will come uh, later. So this is for the future. But of course, you will be able to see, uh, to filter your projects, to filter beneficiaries, etc. Um, our project results, so I think this is a question for Peter, our project results outcomes selected by the applicant in drop down box or are they written in a free text? Yeah, maybe, maybe this, this is, is uh, Yuri, can you mute, mute please? Uh, thank you. Sorry, I heard myself an echo. Um, so uh, this is maybe a further clarification of the hit template, um, but uh, projects have to link the result to an output or a result indicator. So they contribute to result indicators defined by the program. Um, and then in the description box, so actually they, in the first cell that you see in the system, you choose uh, an indicator created by the program. Uh, and then in the result description, that is actually where the applicant should have, this is the place with free text, uh, where they indicate what the result is. So actually the answer is both. <laughs> <laughs> okay, perfect. So you choose the indicator and you describe what actually you're doing in the project. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Peter. So it was this question. This can be ticked off then. 
Uh, so questions are still coming in. We are now almost at the end of our planned time, but we will still continue a bit to answer some of them. Uh, can the European Commission be convinced to rely, rely on GEMS exported data instead of asking separately directly to an A in doing service analysis? Uh, so here you're talking not about SFC, I guess, but about other service analysis. Um, depends what you now mean. Um, also, what is the, the, the need here? If there should be such a discussion with the European Commission, of course, we can um, get in touch or see how we can provide the data the Commission asks from programs in the best way. Um, but I don't know if somebody has a specific answer. I don't know what you mean by service analysis that the Commission does. Um, if there is no further specification. I think, yeah, we can collect requirements and see if there's a specific need for something. Of course, we also as Interact always in touch with the commission. So um, anything can be discussed. If we can convince them, we'll be seen. Um, in case of ID audit, that requires improvement in the GEM system. GEMs could be modified. So you mean IT audit that our system audit that we are going to do? Then, of course, I think we will update the sections where there, there's an audit result, which means that uh, there is a need of improvement. Um, uh, in case a program in a, their own audit finds some, something, uh, maybe you should say. Because. Yeah, sure. I, I think, I guess what they are stating here is when they have an IT audit on their system, which is GEMS, of course. And actually, the findings can be different between programs, even though the software is the same, interestingly. Uh, I think the first step when you have such findings is that you report to us to interact so that we know. And that's eventually the, the possibility that we missed something. And we could do that change in GEMS for all programs, most likely. And of course, if you can modify, you can modify it even if it's not the finding on the IT audit. Uh, even though we do not recommend, we hope you can use the system without any kind of expense, modification of the source code and so on. But sure, you can do your own changes as well. Hopefully that will not happen now. Okay, thank you. Uh, next question is, will it be possible to search applicants per country of lead partner or and partner country? Um, as we already said, there is different um, uh, different reports, overview tables, and so on, which will be developed uh, later. At the moment, we have only the application forms, or of course, you can extract data via the API and do your own statistics. But in the system at the moment, we don't have these statistics yet. Uh, will monitoring sections include options for external programs such as, such as advanced payments? Yes, we got uh, um, the, this uh, requirement we already got that uh, you need to have a section to register advanced payments to beneficiaries. Uh, it's in the use cases for the second phase, so for the, for the next phase for the reporting model. So then this is already foreseen as a, as a requirement. Will GEMS be able to export program reporting tables compatible with uploading data in SFC? This is our goal. Yes, we will, once we come to this uh, reporting model, we will uh, see what is needed for SFC and really try to be very, uh, yeah, very close to do what is needed so that you can export the data in a way that you need it to upload it in SFC. Okay, just, just let me just add, I think our ultimate goal is that it, everything can be automated. So you don't have to do anything. It would be smoothly and, you know, but uh, yeah, uh, if not automated, then still, even if we can, you should be able to export and that's our mission, yeah. Mm -hmm. Then how flexible is GEMS for adaptation? Hopefully there are no elements hard coded. Um, whoever wants to answer, Jose. Yeah. Um, 
hopefully there are no elements hard coded. Yeah, I mean, we, of course, oof, it's a tricky question. I mean, how flexible, it's difficult to tell you <laughs> from the scale or what means flexible and not. But uh, all we can say is that we thought about it, that uh, we want to make gems not only flexible to adaptation, flexible, also, you know, easy to catch up, to read the code, easy to merge, uh, code modification and so on. And uh, yes, it's also one of our concern is that there's nothing like that hard coded and so on. Maybe you might see some elements at this stage because we are in the first release and so on. Like uh, we have hard coded like what, like the roles. We have fixed the roles, you know, we have the applicant, program user and so on, but all these kind of hard coded things uh, should disappear and they should be, uh, the software should be also very refactorized and it should be quite smooth to, to integrate with other software, even though uh, I think it would be important that if you are a program that will make code modification, it's also interesting to get in touch with us and maybe you can also tell us how could we make your life easier. Okay, that's something regarding the plugin stuff. So, what we have in our scope that in the future, maybe we will be able to isolate the core functionality of a system. So, that way you would be able to modify a system implementing the plugins. And that way you would be able to extend it functionalities without interaction with a uh, core. Uh, and that would be beneficial for you because you would be able to get the latest updates from our side. So it means that uh, you will have uh, isolated uh, logic, which belongs only to your program specific in the plugin stuff or so-called add-ons. And uh, you will still be able to get the latest updates uh, from the gems. Yeah, as it was said, I think the core is something where if you make changes, you would not be able to anymore follow potentially our updates and so on. So the core, like, how you go from application form to reporting and so on. This is some basic logic. Uh, if you don't want to follow this, or if you would say that you don't want to follow it at all, uh, it will be quite difficult for you to, to use gems. So there are of course possibilities, but also certain limitations as in any system. Okay. Um, so we have a, a lot of more questions and also we see that uh, you're still adding questions, which is very nice to see that there's a big interest. We're having now nine more, so these we will be answering for sure. Uh, we will have 10 more minutes till 12 o'clock. Uh, so if you have further questions, maybe now uh, we can close collect questions and then uh, you can post your additional questions in the help desk. So you you knew, already got to know how to register there. So please then use other tools in the future for asking your questions. And okay, now we have 10. So please <laughs> now uh, stop and we will continue with this then. And then uh, any other channel is available for you to ask questions. So how frequent will be the language changes? Multilingualism is an issue. Uh, language changes you mean in your system. So at the moment, the, pro, uh, the GEMS is planned to be set up in a way that you choose your languages with the installation at the very beginning. And once you selected your languages and you publish the first call, actually there should not be, or there cannot be any more changes to the languages selected. So this section is blocked. Um, because of course the languages are used in the application form. So if you would then later change your input languages, you would suddenly have uh, empty fields or also um, additional fields or fields which had an input in a specific language which you deselected. So that's why we are blocking kind of this language selection in the system. But what you can change is actually tr the translations. Uh, so if you have not everything translated, you can still add translations or later also translation will be possible, for example, for the questions of the application form in the system. So then if you say this question should be actually translated differently, um, this you can change later. Uh, Alex, yeah, I think the question was a bit different. It's exactly that. So the, as the system evolves, more things are introduced and you have to do translation on that. Right now we use the file 
And yeah, you need to manage that file so that anytime you do an update, you have to keep the translation aligned with the update. So what we are working right now is that, you know, maybe we, you know about it, the person who made the question is that so far we have been using a translation file and it's true, it's a bit difficult to manage this kind of translation thing. Every time you do an update, there are more, you know, more elements to do translation there and you have to scroll through all of them to find out where you should do the, the translation and not. And this is, can be a bit of an issue. And the solution right now we are working on is to uh, pass this translation file to the database and where we have a more elegant, more ergonomic way of making translations. So when you do an update, you exactly see easy way to spot what are the new elements, what you have to change there. Not that file, but a much better UI. Um, the next question is about uh, the workflow in the system. Is the process of application, so how application moves from one step to another? I assume step is meant here in general for all the process of a life cycle in the gems modifiable. Genia, you want to answer? Yes, um, uh, yeah, we have set up the process now until the decision and uh, those kind of statuses uh, the application goes through, they are fixed for the system. And we will have another status uh, coming on top of that, of course, contracting, et cetera. Um, but um, this, these are not really modifiable because they are in the core system. I mean, theoretically, everything is modifiable, of course, but uh, this would then also maybe be uh, in contradiction with the core logic of the system. However, as far as we have it developed now for the assessment process, uh, the process, the statuses are very flexible. And um, for example, you can do eligibility and quality assessment in parallel, or you can do it one after the other, according to the program's workflows and the program's audit trails needs. It is everything recorded in the audit log, of course, but um, it this definition of the process of application should be open enough that it's not in contradiction with uh, program logic, but still we are open to maybe further discussions on this if you have a special need in that regard. Maybe to add one thing um, that uh, we also develop, as Genia explained, a two-step approach, so there will be an additional step or an option to allow an additional step, so this is also possible. And last thing just to confer like to agree with Genia if there's any specific use case that you cannot apply please approach us through the help desk with your issue um why you could not work with the steps that are there now and then we can find a solution yes this is valid for any feature or any any section in the in the system so if there's something which doesn't support your workflow please inform us uh, next question is, will GEMS be able to manage aggregate data about indicators? Uh, so everything is prepared for this. So how we built the logic to uh, first define indicators in the program setup and then link the application forms to these indicators. Uh, this will of course then later allow us to aggregate the reached indicators uh, numbers, uh, but this is uh, in the future plan, yes. How many simultaneous users can edit same application without errors? <laughs> Kenny, I think mm -hmm. you're working on this currently. Yeah, it depends. I mean, there will not be errors, but data will simply be overwritten and um, a user will be notified. So this is something we will implement soon that if two users are really working in the same section, so on the same page of the system, uh, then uh, there will be a warning issued if the data have changed and somebody wants to overwrite the data. So this will not be possible. Anyway, in the same application, an application has many, many pages. So it will still be possible that different users work at the same time on different sections. So the system is flexible enough for this and it will also prevent uh, errors and overwriting of data. Is about 
a PDF download. So is a PDF lector planned to avoid to download files from the platform and avoid that confidential documents as downloaded on, on personal computers? Jose or Yuri, do you have an answer to this? Uh, PDF, PDF exportation is actually the topic uh, which would be presented soon as well as an option. Uh, I'm not sure what uh, this PDF lecture means uh, from perspective of security, would need to check. But exportation of the application form is actually is a topic which we are currently discussing. So, well, yes, uh, uh, depending on our priorities, uh, exportation will be delivered. Um, yeah, I, I mean, from the question, it's a bit blurry, but I understood I, it's expected that people can download to their personal computers that, you know, we don't go to the detail of where the people have personal computers without security or not. So far, we never thought about it, but the requirement we have from many programs is that they can download. files. Not, not everything will be in the system container, but they can download files. Uh, I'm not sure if I answer this question, though. But we can maybe I can, I this, can uh, make it yeah. try and think what is meant is if there is the possibility on the system to read a PDF um, without storing any local files on your computer, because this might potentially be in breach of um, security requirements. Yeah, I think in EMS there was actually this yeah. uh, container for created PDF files which were saved in the system and then you could download them. So potentially this is referring to this functionality in, in EMS. No. The functionality to view before download. Okay, uh, we, we can, it's actually it's the first time I hear about it. So I, we kept that in mind. Yeah, maybe the person who wrote this can also in our help desk or address us directly with these requirements to, to detail more what is the, the expected requirement for, for PDF download. Okay. How is release management planned? So this is actually a, a good question. We have some more. Um, we are already at 12, but I think as we are in the release event, this management, um, the time frame we talked about uh, for the management itself, maybe Yuri or should they can uh, Yeah, so uh, how is it done? Actually, uh, for current release, uh, you know what we have announced and announced the date when we will deliver the package. Uh, and then uh, you should be registered uh, on a help desk to be able to access to the specific package. Uh, and then you would be able to see also the release notes, the technical release notes and user release notes which uh, will help you to set up the system and which will help you to understand what actually is going to be delivered. Uh, next release would be announced uh, by uh, our teammates who will actually announce this information in their communities. And uh, we will also publish uh, the next package in the uh, GEMS portal. So uh, to be able to see actually uh, the release page, able to and you should be registered on the help desk. These are like super requisites to uh, have an access to the release notes and to the package itself. Okay. Thank you. Uh, so we agreed to take three more questions as we are already after 12. So these three, which we have here, we will answer and then the rest, please um, post them in the, in the help desk or there will be a next occasion when, when we meet for the further questions. Uh, are the provided technical requirements final yet? Current stage, yes, we can say so, but uh, it doesn't mean that uh, during the development process we can implement something new and then we will modify it and publish a new version. Jose, if you see something. No, I, 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 guess, I guess here it's, uh, I think the scope here, the, this question is maybe addressing the, the requirements in terms like the procurement for the hardware, for instance, and so on. And yeah. I, I would say, yes, if you follow our recommendations in terms of hardware, uh, you should not have a problem. You can assume they are final on that regard. Uh, now there was a question, okay, maybe it's coming, we can address later. Okay. Uh, will James be able to 
to track monitoring of reports and payments to project report are made within 90 days. This is a feature planned. Uh, we just need to also see the requirements for if there is a harmonization about when to stop the clock and all these things. But overall, the feature is planned to be implemented, yes. Uh, maybe you meant this question, yeah. Jose, about... Uh, yeah. You, okay. Go on. Yeah, so I, I think let me just introduce because you know this is something we didn't have control of. It would make sense a lot when we recommend the programs to go for CentOS 8 because it was expected to have a long release date, you know, support. But it just happened that uh, Red Hat, by the force of capitalism, who knows, they kind of short the end of life yeah that's true i mean you know gems should work in pretty much every distribution of linux i would say actually it even works in windows so this is not the real issue i mean it's true that we have to make a solution for a recommendation you know uh, but let's not making it uh, something critical I think uh, we have to talk with CloudFlight and uh, find out uh, what would be the second recommendation after CentOS 8. You know, just for your funny fact, is that CentOS 7 is actually uh, supported until 2024, though. So maybe at first, uh, uh, you know, as a plan B, maybe you can go for CentOS, CentOS 7. Or you can also use other Linux, but uh, I think it's good that Interact provides a recommendation on the operating system. So I think you should expect something, some update from us in the next month. Yeah, just one add uh, what is actually coming from the uh, CentOS uh, that we have, have recommended to migrate to the CentOS stream on the CentOS 8. So you can do yeah. it without any issues and uh, one more thing so we actually <clears throat> can recommend to use the centers because we have tested our uh, system and our environment is actually based on it and uh, what just said that it's even supported by windows so but uh, we cannot predict for instance which system we will use and which potential technical issues we could have but uh, we can actually confirm that uh, gems package itself will work on all the uh, environments Okay, thank you for this answer. Uh, I see, okay, in the end we have only three more questions. This one we have already answered, so I can, I think, click it away because this is a plan for the future. And then there are these two more questions, which are again technical questions. So I hope uh, all are still interested in these answers. Um, so this is the last two we will answer about also secure no, websites. Yes. Short answer, yes, we will issue a certificate and we will put it where we didn't do it before because there was no need since we have multiple demo environments. Uh, but if you're worried about that, it's easy to add a certificate there for this. Okay, so this, it will be a secure website, just a demo environment we used well, is not yet uh, secure. Okay, thank you for this one. And then we have only the last one. Great, we managed all of them. Uh, do you plan to implement I don't even know this, <laughs> so maybe somebody who knows this can answer. Ada's identification. Marcus, maybe. I think that is already answered because I think the Ada's is the European Commission login. Ah, this is the same. Ah. Yes. Okay. So yeah, no, this is uh, not the plan to have this login combined with Gems. Okay, then we have also answered this one. Good. Thank you very much for all your questions. It, uh, so we had a quite long question answer session, which is very fruitful, I think, also for other programs uh, to listen to. Thank you for joining our event. And I hand over to Aya maybe for the last words today. Yeah, thanks a lot to everyone who found time to participate in GEMS Lounge. Uh, as usually, we are interested to know uh, what was your opinion about the meeting, and we posted the link to the survey that we invite you to, to fill in. And then we invite you again in two weeks to the sprint review meeting, and we see you there. And let's see, in May is the next release. Most likely, it will not be event, but yeah, 
keep yourself updated with following us in uh, communities and other communication channels that we today presented to you. Thanks a lot and see you in other occasions then. Yeah, thank you for joining. I see that Claudia is even joining from holidays apparently <laughs> <laughs> because it's the Easter week. So thank you, yeah, for you. And happy Easter, yeah. <laughs> Happy Easter to all of those who celebrate this weekend, yeah. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank, thank, thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you. Bye -bye. Good job, bye -bye. Dan. Cheers. Ciao. Bye. Ciao, Claudia. Cheers. Enjoy your holidays. Cheers. <laughs>